Hello Internet, it's Big Dave here and I just wanted to take a moment to sit down and share my thoughts and feelings, and yes I said feelings, on the recent Dawn of War 2 Retribution free to play weekend. Now this free to play weekend only featured the multiplayer, so I can't say anything about the campaign, but I will talk to you a little bit about the experiences that I had while playing the multiplayer game. Of course, this little free-to-play event was not by happenstance. It didn't just happen. Its arrival was, in fact, fortuitous for Relic in that it was planned to precede the new DLC that they just released. So, a smart little move, something that we've seen other companies do that would include uh, Steel Monkeys with the post-apocalyptic mayhem free-to-play weekend, which was there to celebrate their new DLC pack. A very smart marketing move, if I do say so myself, because people will play a free game. And if you then say, hey, you can buy this free game and it's on sale, and oh yeah, here's something brand new, some new DLC that we just came out with, and it's like $5. Don't you want that too? A lot of people are going to say, yes, I'll take it. Did you like that voice? I have no idea where that voice came from. <laughs> okay, that's my greedy gamer voice. That's a character. I'm going to make that a reoccurring character. Greedy gamer. So let's talk a little bit about uh, Dawn of War 2 Retribution. Of course, I'm playing a lot of Space Marine, uh, and I'm enjoying the Warhammer 40,000 universe. I think by most people's estimations, Relic has been a pretty good steward of the... Uh, or is it Steward? Steward or steward? Tell me in the comments below. My feeble brain doesn't know at this moment. Uh, they've been a pretty good steward. St steward. It's Steward sounds better. So by most people's estimations, Relic has been a pretty good steward of the Warhammer 40,000 universe, the Warhammer license, the IP, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, they've done a pretty good job by most standards, most of what I've heard people talk about. Uh, most Warhammer 40,000 fans are not offended by the work that Relic has done. I think there was some stretching of lore in Space Marine from what I read in one article, but it didn't really seem to get anybody in any uh, uh, anybody's panties tied into any intricate uh, naval-style knots. So it seems like Relic is doing a pretty good job with the license, and I wouldn't be surprised to see them continue to ride the Warhammer 40,000 license, especially since they have a very loyal uh, player base with Dawn of War 2 Retribution, the sort of player base that would probably eat up a Dawn of War 3. Again, I am mostly familiar with Relic for their work on Space Marine. I played a little bit of Company of Heroes, and I played a little bit of Dawn of War 1, which I was in fact a closed beta tester for. I have no idea how I got that gig. Uh, it wasn't a paid gig, it was just one of those things, sign up on our website to test this new game. And I did, and I got to play test Dawn of War, uh, the original. And uh, apparently my memories of that failed me, because in a recent video I described Dawn of War 2 as a standard, quote, standard RTS, and that's far from the truth. Uh, I would describe this game now having played it as an action RTS, in the same way that, uh, you know, you have action RPGs, which are more focused on the hacking and the slashing and the beating and the killing than they are on the carefully selecting a move from a menu, like, a, like say, a JRPG would be. Uh, this is definitely a world away from something like Civilization, a strategic RTS game, and it's even distanced itself in many ways from something like StarCraft II, which is a more action-oriented uh, uh, RTS, but still has those sort of strategic elements. You still have to build your buildings, you still have to know your build orders, etc., etc. Now, the campaign may be a little different, but in Dawn of War II Retribution, you fired up the game, you got into a game, and man, you were teching right away, you were uh, controlling points on the map, which gave you your resources. So instead of sending out some weak NPCs to mine uh, gas or minerals or whatever, uh, you actually just sent your forces out, you claimed an area, you claimed a resource, and you began to get that resource ticking into your coffers. You then used that to uh, build units, and your units are all in squads. Some units are, are single, but uh, for the most part, especially when you're playing as any of the Space Marine factions, 
Uh, it's squads of three, four, five guys. Very, very cool. Very much like the tabletop game. I do have a tiny sliver of experience with the tabletop game, but that is now almost... Oh, goodness. It's going to pain me to think about this. 20... 17 years ago. Seven, around 17 years ago, I would say. Uh, middle school. God, has it been that long since I was in middle school? Oh, Lord. Okay. So, moving on from my deep, deep depression. Uh, you have multiple units, so you build one, you know, assault marine squadron. And you actually get three or four little units in that squad. Very cool. Very, very cool. Uh, you then use your resources to tech up to new levels where you can uh, you can build more monstrous vehicles and units. It was very cool. It was very fast-paced, action-oriented. The map that I played was a control-style map. I understand that there are other uh, types of uh, game, uh, game... There's a word I'm looking for. There are other game types. There are other modes of play, but... I, I got grouped up with a couple of people and we just sort of played a couple or three games um, all at once and then I came back later um, well I started out playing the computer two or three games then I played a, a, like three games with the same group of people and then I came back and I got one more game and uh, all of those were on that sort of just control point uh, control the points and then destroy your enemy that was the mode that I played in. I don't know what that mode is called. You're seeing footage in the background of my game. It was This was one of the better games. Uh, I only recorded two. One of them was a, a horrible, horrible and embarrassing defeat. Uh, it was the first game I played against real people. This one, while I had a lot of miscues, we did win in the end, and I felt somewhat useful for the most part during this game. So, um, all in all, I really felt that Dawn of War 2 was something unexpected. Um, I suppose that I should have kind of expected it, though. You know, it was the uh, it was the unexpected that should have been expected. Having played Company of Heroes, um, a more uh, action-oriented, you know, quote RTS-style game, I should have expected that from uh, from this game. And uh, again, I had played Dawn of War uh, many years ago and should have remembered what this game was like, but for some reason. I did not. I guess I'd played so much StarCraft II in the interim that uh, they just sort of merged, since StarCraft II does borrow so heavily from the Warhammer 40,000 universe. So all in all, it's a very fast-paced game. It did require some strategy. I liked that there were cover mechanics. That was really cool. There were bunkers and things you could get into on most of the maps that I played. That was very nice. Positioning was important. Uh, having the high ground or having the angles. It was a very, very strategic game. But at the same time, it was also really fun to just kind of run in with superior numbers and just totally devastate people um, and just violate them in ways uh, that they wished to not be violated. Uh, I can't really say a whole lot more about this game. Uh, I think I've rambled on for more than uh, my allotted time. I was impressed by the game. If I could get the game at a slightly better price, I would probably buy it. I know that it still has an active community, and that's a great thing about a game like this. When you make a really solid game, you can continue to have an active community years after release. I mean, I know people who still play Quake 2. Okay? I still play Duke Nukem 3D when I get the chance. Uh, you know, a, a quality game that has replayability is going to maintain an audience for years to come. A forgettable game that people just get through and then put on the shelf? Who cares? But if you can create something special, which I think Runic has done here with their... Did I say Runic? Oh my god. I've got, I've got Runic Relic Disease again. I think Runic has created something special here with the Dawn of War style of gameplay. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, I really hope to see it continue in a future series, and I would love the chance to get my hands on Dawn of War 2, but uh, it's just not in the cards right now. Alright guys, thanks for listening to me ramble on about an event that occurred two weeks ago, and something that really doesn't matter in the end, but I do appreciate your tolerance. Alright, if you don't notice, I'm on the old mic. Uh, this is just a real quick and total... <laughs> 
let me, let me digress for a moment into a completely different area. Uh, I think I'm realizing my new microphone is fantastic for picking me up at a distance, but I really do believe that for voiceovers, this old microphone, my Blue Snowball, may be just a little bit better. And this would be a perfect example of that. Uh, even though I'm not able to get a lot of really high quality out of this when I'm sitting and trying to play a game controller in my hand or headset on my head, two hands on the keyboard, I can't lean over as close as I need to lean and speak directly into this microphone, but I can sit back and talk full volume into my Samson microphone. So I think both of these microphones have their place, amazingly enough, and uh, I would continue to uphold my recommendation of the Blue Snowball. It's proving itself to be... I was going to use the word versatile, but that's it's the opposite of that. It's proving itself to have a niche in which it can operate and can give me good... Uh, good, good, good. Was there a U in that? G O U D, good. It's, it's giving me a good value for money. So, uh, the Blue Snowball, check it out. I really like my new Samson microphone. I am ha having some trouble dialing in all the particulars of that mic, but when I get it, I know the sound quality is going to be mwah, very, very nice. All right, guys, I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy.